My first guest is the executive vice president at the National Taxpayers Union, Brandon Arnold. What's wrong with you people? Why don't you feel all the goodness coming from Bidenomics? Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe it's the fact that just because inflation is coming down doesn't mean people are better off. If you look at wages, that's a really important factor to look at. Wages have leveled off. In fact, wages were lower than the rate of inflation for many years for the majority of this president's term. Therefore, even though they were getting a little bit more money in their paycheck, things were so much more expensive at the grocery store, at the gasoline station, pretty much everywhere. So everyone was falling behind, whether there were Republicans that don't like Biden or Democrats that love Biden or somewhere in between, people were falling behind and they continue to fall behind because as we've discussed in the past, inflation is cumulatory. And since this president took office, we've seen inflation increase to the tune of about 16 or so percent. That's why people aren't happy. Inflation was 1.4 percent when Donald Trump was president. It's now slowed to double that number from a high of 9%. If Biden's responsible for the receding of inflation, why is he not responsible for the increase? Yeah, he's responsible for all the good stuff, not responsible for all the bad stuff. I think that's a typical uh, politician play here, but I don't think it's fooling anyone. Uh, listen, inflation has taken off like gangbusters. Everybody knows that we've been dealing with it for the past couple years and the problem that we've had here is that when we've tried to address address inflation we've done through some foolish means the inflation reduction act actually probably increased inflation because it was so front loaded with spending and borrowing in the early years with the promise if you believe the politicians that will eventually cut spending uh six seven eight years down the road i don't buy it and the other thing that we've seen of course is the fed trying to reduce demand by raising interest rate Demand destruction is another way of saying we're going to make you poorer. If you don't have any money in your pocket, you can't go out there and spend it. Well, let, 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 let me jump money. in here with that. You know, if if the climate is forcing prices up and that lowers demand, eventually, unless providers and retailers want to sit on all their inventory, they're going to have to lower prices. So they say, well, prices are coming down for for eggs or milk or ground beef or gasoline or whatever it is. Yeah, when prices hit records high, people drive less. They find alternative foods to eat. They eat less. I hate to say it. I mean, yeah, you'd be like, wow, people lost a lot of weight during the, the high inflation. Yeah, because food was expensive. But when prices get that red hot, a Eventually, they have no choice but to come down. Yeah, that's true to an extent. I, I totally agree with you. But, you know, a lot of people have exhausted their options. You can only reduce your food spending so much. People substitute from name brand products, the cheaper, uh, 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 you know, generics and things like that. They drive less, like you say. They skip out on vacations. The other way that they've addressed this problem is by taking on more debt. And that's, that's one of the problems. I was going to say next. Like, if we look at consumer credit card debt during all of this, it's skyrocketed because as wages were eaten up by inflation, like you just said, people relied more on their credit cards. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're at an all time high when it comes to credit card debt of about a trillion dollars. It's about fifty seven hundred dollars per household right now. That's an enormous burden. Most credit card debt, of course, is governed by variable interest rates. So as the Fed raises interest rates, that means those minimum payments. That means the interest on your credit card. It's all ticking upwards. And if you're barely keeping your head above water as it is, those higher interest rates can be absolutely devastating. It's a reason when the Fed meets later this month, I'm hoping that they do what they did in June, and that is not raise interest rates again. I, I begged President Trump to not sign that COVID relief bill. I knew it was going to spend trillions of dollars we didn't have. I knew it was going to cause inflation. Then they came back again with the not just the Inflation Reduction Act, but the American Rescue Plan. The, the, the Federal Reserve cannot just invent money out of thin air and think it's not going to have an effect on on the economy. Right. And we, we kind of have this pretty awful intersection of the dollar buying less while everything costs more. So when you shut down the economy, when you, you gut the 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 oil and, and the gas industry and you cause backups and delays and shortages, I mean, it, it's a pretty terrible place 
for millions of people to be, their dollar buys less and everything costs more. And that was caused by government. Yeah, it was kind of a perfect storm. And the government was the biggest culprit by, you know, obviously uh, supply chains, which were very much disrupted by government activity. Uh, that was another huge factor. You can't just shut down factories all over the globe and expect to flip them on like a light switch. It takes a, a while for them to sort out the backload, to work through a lot of the problems. And a lot of countries, namely China, were shut down much, much longer than, than we are. And they're still dealing with some shutdown effects. So the global shutdown, we're, we're still not recovered from that. And that's one of the reasons why inflation is persisting much longer than a lot of people expected. But yeah, the government has enacted horrible policies left and right. The energy space, as you mentioned, has been one of the biggest offenders. We can't immediately, again, flip a light switch and all of a sudden have this country powered by solar and wind. It just doesn't happen that way. Even if that's the goal that we want to set for our country, and I'm not sure that is the appropriate goal, that takes years, if not decades, to achieve. But this administration thinks that we can immediately shut down nuclear generators and coal-fired plants and everything and run on you know, hope and dreams in our imagination and be just fine. That's not the case. Europe tried it, and it's why they're dealing with an energy nightmare currently. I got to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You know, every time